and we're live right. although there's now the eyeball popped up so now we're like it's official we're live live correct i'm gonna put this graphic on this overlay just so people know it's like does she like me what or does she like me like me? what they're getting into there it is it's the cast at clocker clocker really need insurance we're on wednesdays at six it's not we have learned that it's not good for us to say every wednesday at six because that would be a lie. That would be a lie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Stuff we got to do. Sometimes. We're inconsistent. We are. <laughs> we don't get. We paid. are consistently we inconsistent. And we don't get paid for the show. So. No. I mean, it's a not, little bit of a stipend. Yeah. But that's like. A yeah. Lunch money. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Somebody is watching. Remember, we're on Glocker Realty and Insurance on Facebook. We're also Glocker Realty and Insurance on YouTube. I keep encouraging people to go check out the YouTube channel just because there's so much good stuff over there on the YouTube channel that I want people to go and watch it, right? So that's what's, that's what's happening there. Don't get nervous. I'm just checking mics. This is the new system. This is the new setup. Oh, yeah. You said you were getting a new setup. It came, and this is it. So all I that like other that. stuff, yeah, gone. That's much better. Much so easier I'm, to carry I'm, around. It's so much easier to carry around. So yeah, this is the new setup. Getting used to is it. Is this the first time we're using it? No, this would be like the third time that we're using it. Well, it's the first time that we're using it on Cast It Clocker. Yeah, I've used it on Porchcast Pottstown several times. And, and everything was good. No, last time it didn't pick up the microphones for some reason. I actually I know why, because I got a. An update came in as I was setting it up. Okay. So the computer never read the microphones on the device. Uh, it never recognized okay. it. Uh, and I didn't figure that out until we, after we were in the show. So I, I think I have that problem solved today. So sure. So now. let us know if you can't hear us. Oh, uh, people, people are definitely going to let us know. Also, don't forget that we do have a chat function open. Please use that to your benefit to participate in the show. The show is much better when we get audience participation. We like an interactive show. We do. It's much more fun for everybody. Correct. Yeah. Let us and know. And they can that put their out. shout outs up there on the screen if they want. They can do whatever they, can they say want. Hi, they can say hi to their I'm, mom. Um, I don't care. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. Thanks for tuning into the cast at Glocker. Now we have a guest today. We do. Should I introduce him? You should introduce him because I am going to go over to his Facebook page okay. and start bringing up information so that I can post in the chat function. Okay, I think he needs an introduction too, just because of the name. It is the magically amazing Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. That was super. Yeah. You want to move up to the mic a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we want to hear what you're saying, Ryan. Uh, Very important. So you're magical, you're amazing, and your name is Ryan. They all that fit. That says it all, right? They all fit, yes. Pretty much it. So uh, tell us your backstory. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm a magician. I'm an entertainer. I also do balloons. Um, Backstory, like how I got into magic and stuff like that. Sure. Let's start there. We, we um, can go to your childhood if you want. Child, that's well, that's great because that's where it starts. Okay. I was about six years old. It was Christmas. Mom and dad, they got me a, it was the Houdini magic kit. Nice. And that's, I think, what kicked it all off, really. Um, I got that magic kit, started showing to them, my parents, some tricks, some of my friends, my tricks. And, uh, and is that six years old, you said? That's six years old, okay. yep. Yeah. So, uh, it was a little before I was professional. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Um, so got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I got that kit. I showed some friends and family some tricks for a while. Um, but then, you know, as things go, they come and go in, in life. But then I, I went to the boardwalk in Ocean City, New Jersey one time, and I found this magic shop. It was called the Genie Magic Shop. And I think that's kind of when the bug really bit the magic yeah. bug really bit and so you knew you liked doing it at that point you, you did it as a younger child and when you saw that shop just full of whatever you can think of in there right yep, yep. you're like wow i could i could see myself having a lot of fun with this right totally totally yeah. so and that by that time i was probably maybe a teenager maybe a little bit before then but um my mom would go with me in there and she'd buy me. I'd be like, oh, mom, this looks fun. Let's, let's get that. So I'd get that. And, you know, same thing. I would 
I'd still be younger, so I would show my friends and my family until they got tired of it. And then a couple years would go on, and I'd be doing that same stuff, getting a couple new tricks, but never really getting paid for it sure. or anything. But just it was a hobby. Um, but then, then I found another magic shop closer to home, which was uh, the Mingus Magic Shop, just in Reading. Uh, I, I can't let me say that again. The Mingus Magic Shop in Reading, because that magic shop changes lives every day. Uh, people are going there, and they they meet Wayne, the shop owner, and he just he, it's this trick. You might be probably have heard of it. It's the cups and balls. Sure. You know, he he does the cups and balls for somebody, and it's it's just kids laid up. It, yeah. And then then they buy the trick and learn how it's done, and I don't want to say they're disappointed, <laughs> but. <laughs> Um, you know, when you find out what well, magic is, I don't want to say it's not real because it's very real, but there, there is something behind most tricks. So, um, but anyway, back to my point. Uh, so I'm, I went to the Mingus magic shop and then, then I was spending some serious money. And that's when it turned to the point where, okay, I need to start finding a way to recoup some of this. Sure. And that's when I did my first magic show, which was for, uh, a local community limerick it was a limerick uh community day and i did my first magic show there how long ago was that that was about 15 years ago now okay um so from there i would just i just got better and better things would become more consistent and shows would be more consistent but it wasn't until i picked the timing really well it was about three three years ago i quit my full-time job which i worked for a vending company and started doing this full time you and didn't know the world was going to get shut down no, that idea. no i'm like everything is going great i got enough work i got see you're not a fortune teller you're no. just a, you're not just no. a magician but a magician you yes could yeah foretell the future i had some uh some mind reader friends that probably could have clued me in but <laughs> they uh they didn't um but yeah so then I, as you said the world's kind of shut down there for two years but now we're back. Yeah, we're back. The world's so how do you? St I'm now. I'm curious to how you st st stood, stayed on your feet. That's that's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, it just turned to other things like. Uh, you got a regular job. Well, I didn't have a regular job. I, I started doing some video editing. Okay. Uh, I flew uh, a drone. I got my drone pilot's license, nice. and that was something that I could do, without, being in crowds of people or anything like yeah. that. Um, so that's that's pretty much what got me through for a couple of years, and so you figured it out. You figured out a way to get through, and and then you got went back to what you love. Yeah, yeah. putting smiles on faces. That's what it's all about. Um, now, were I, you able to do that kind of stuff during the stay-at-home orders and the social distancing regulations during the pandemic? Is that what you were doing? Yeah, usually you, you um, were doing the the drone and the the other. What was the other thing you said? I'm just sorry. like video editing. Video editing. Yeah, like um, actually. Well, yeah, the drone stuff, I was able to go out right. like a, for like tree companies or something like that. Or, okay. Because I would pretty much just have to stand there by myself. It wasn't like I was really. Yeah, right, with right, right. So then I just take that footage home and send it out through emails and things like that. So were you making magic videos at all? Like, were you doing yeah, that kind of stuff? Asking, right? There was a guy who luckily right before everything set in and they started shutting things down, we filmed everything for a, a, a magician friend of mine. We made a promo video for him. Okay. Uh, his name's Brent Lil Tagar. He goes by his stage name. And um, yeah, so through the first, what I thought would be the main part of the pandemic, the first three months or something, I was uh, working on editing that for him. Okay. So, but then it ended up going for an extra year and <laughs> nine months. <laughs> did you do any like Facebook lives or anything where you just did some magic just to keep, keep the interest alive and stuff like that? Yeah, I, I did a little bit. It's, it's weird. It's, I, I do it. I do this because I love doing it, but you got the interaction. You want the people. The interaction is to, what it's all yeah. about. And knowing that you're doing something that people aren't enjoying is, is great. It's nice. You know, you stand there in front of the camera in a quiet room and, um, do some tricks and then you can see through the comment section that some people are you know watching or enjoying it but um 
you just you just don't know. Which brings us to a good point that people can make comments, right? Yeah. So on this show, as, you can make comments. And there are some people who are doing that. Okay. So thank you for your class participation. I'll give some shout outs. Uh, Nate Heater is logging into the show. He's saying hello to Ryan. He's also giving a big shout out to the Mingus Magic Shop. Uh, someone yeah, else I, who I think you might know, Nikki Adam Ad, Adamovich. 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 Adamovich, yes. Is that your wife? That's my mother. Your mom. Yeah. All right. So moms are really good at uh, tuning in. She's saying hello, Ryan. Oh, fantastic. And uh, I put up some links to Mingus Magic Shop into the comment section. I also put up links to Ryan's Facebook page so people can find it that way. And I'm getting ready to put up a link to Ryan's web page. Nice. Um, people who are looking at the screen will see that uh, his web page, the amazing, the, excuse me, I'm getting super tongue tied. I don't know why. You are. The magically amazing Ryan.com. Nice. That's his web page. That's how he asked people to find him. I'm glad you brought up the Mingus Magic Shop. Not that I don't know it at all, but that's the reason why I'm glad you brought it up because I think it's good to know that we have a local magic shop around here for people that are interested. Oh yeah, like I would, I'd, I'd like to take my kids there. Yeah, you know? your kids would probably love, love it, it, right? Right. Yeah, you, absolutely. You absolutely should. Yeah, it's right on Lancaster Avenue or Lancaster, Lancaster. However, I don't know. Depends on where you go. Lancaster. Down. Yeah, uh, but it's it's the most amazing place. Um, I mean. It's it's a shop. Uh, in another little plug, uh, something I did not during the pandemic, but right before the pandemic, we actually made a uh, my best friend and I we made a documentary about the Mingus Magic Shop because it had been around for eighty years at the time. Oh wow! So yeah, it's funny, you know. A lot of people they say they drive by it or they don't know it's there, but then once they find it, it's uh, just feel like you're at home. Yeah, it's a very welcoming place. You don't feel like you have to go in there. It's not like a shop where you just need to go buy something uh as i said wayne the shop owner he just he just enjoys people coming in and i mean certainly buy something oh, if right, you want. Sure. uh but um gotta stay afloat yeah but uh he just he just loves spreading the magic did you um did you finish the documentary we did yes it, can you can people watch that somewhere or buy it somewhere or there is dvd available dvd uh dvds available at the shop Okay. Uh, at, so, the Mingus at the Mingus Magic Shop. Shop? Yes. Okay. So check there. Occasionally we do uh, put it up on YouTube to have like a live stream there because a couple times it was shown at the uh, the Boscov's Film Theater in uh, at the Goggle Works. Also oh, okay, up in, yeah, up in Reading. Mm -hmm. And uh, but since we couldn't do that for a while, we started just doing some showings on like a Facebook or uh, a YouTube kind of thing. What's okay. the YouTube, What's the name of the video? Oh, what's the name of the, the name documentary? Of the it's it's a little long, but it's uh, called "Thank You for Supporting," and then it's eighty years of Mingus Magic. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, that was a lot of fun to make. It was because I have a lot of magician friends there, so we interviewed probably about twenty to thirty people and uh, got lots of information, lots of history. But it's just we also. Um, just talking about the friendships and what comes out of a magic shop. It's more than just a place to buy magic. You can. I mean, you all have the same in, like, you all have the same interest, so you know, that that connects you right away, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah, sure. Um, so, so now things getting back to normal, and you're outperforming again. So, where, like, what have you been doing recently? Where, where could, where might have people seen you? Oh, it was just a busy Easter. There was quite a few uh, Easter egg hunts I was at. Okay. Um, this weekend, this coming weekend, I have a, there's a, a my hometown of Royersford. Uh, we have a park, uh, Victory Park. It's the official annual opening of Victory Park. So I'll be there. Where is Victory Park in Royersford? It is. It's on Second. Rocco. It's on Second Street or Second Avenue, whatever they yeah. call it. That's the one entrance to it. You can get all. Up, up onto it off of Second Street. Having trouble speaking. Yeah, I know. That's usually I my know. problem. I know. I, yeah. I I don't know what's causing it. I ate a, I I didn't eat lunch. That might be it. And then around dinner. Yeah, I went okay. over and got something to eat, and it might just not have kicked in yet. Okay. Sorry. I'm I'm working. Okay. I'm gonna just keep continue you'll to do fine. my thing. You'll be fine, man. Yeah, but I'm it's on Second out, Avenue. I don't remember blah, blah, blah. if it's Second Avenue or Second Street. It's a, it's a Second, Second Avenue. Avenue. 
yep. you can access Victory Park off of Second Avenue okay. Board. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So they're they're having an event there this weekend. Yep. Yep. Whole whole thing. Moon bounces, face painting. I know they're having a couple bands come out and play. Okay. Um, yeah. So and I'll be there doing. You'll be doing your magic. You. I'll be doing balloons. I got you. four hours of balloons to do. So that's where all the balloons come in. Uh, yeah, and then and then after that, that well, that one's that one's open to the public. But after that, at night, at eleven o'clock at night, I go to do the Springford Post Prom. Okay, uh, that's <laughs> cool. That's gonna be that'll awesome. be fun. Yeah, because yeah. you go from the younger kids to the slightly older kids, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. It should be a lot of fun. I've done it two or three years now, and this year they're doing it at Arnold's family fun center okay which is down in oaks so i got a lot to compete with down there uh as far as keeping them away from, not away from the go-karts but you know making sure they want to come and see me and not just play in the sure. arcades or laser tag or all that stuff but yeah it'll be a lot of fun nice so that's the after prom yeah the party. after prom like the mother's the, what's snap students need alternative programming I, i'm sorry i don't know what the p stands for but I'll find out. Programming sounds fine to me. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I never party, heard of that. You ever heard of that? No. No, I haven't. Either. And um, I, you would think I would know because I have high school aged kids. Yeah. But we're at least one left. But I've had two boys go through high school. But yeah. I, it's not one that I've I've heard. Yeah. 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 It's just I guess like the mothers and parents and teachers and stuff, just so that they the kids don't go to a party that. Yeah, with drugs and alcohol. Yeah, yeah right. Alcohol. Sure. Yeah. I get it. The stuff that we did when we were in high school. We don't want our kids doing the same thing. Pretty much. Pretty much. So um so so yeah, you got that coming up. Um so you, you did you said Easter was big. Um I see you did um Christ Church of the Valley egg hunt. Yeah, that was the egg hunt. There was that was that was a big one. There was kids waiting in line for a balloon for about a half hour. And I mean, it's just your hands couldn't time quick enough. I, I was going as fast as I could. You know, we just here's a dog, here's a sword, here's a you know something something relatively quick. But um, it was still the line was just. What is the mo what is the most popular balloon shape, animal, whatever you want to call it? Flowers. Flowers. Flowers always go over the, really well. Oh yeah. Flowers, hmm. sword, and then swords. So everybody loves a sword because one, yeah, one you can person, hit people with yeah, it. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. One gets one person gets a sword and then they all everybody needs to defend themselves from there. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. Carmela Lamontia is saying hello. Oh, hey Frank. I put up a link to that SNAP program. It's the name of their association. Uh, it's the Springford SNAP Association. Oh, it's a special Springford. Thing. Yeah, correct. Okay. So uh, I get it. Uh Nate Definitely. Heater's saying he wants a balloon dog. Oh yeah? Yeah. Should we make Nate a balloon? Yeah, do it. yeah, let's see. Let's see in action. We've here. talked about this now for a, a half an hour, so I'm sure people are dying to see your skills and ability. Okay. Well, let's. Are you cutting anybody in half today? That was my other. My cutting other anybody in half? No, no, nobody's getting cut in half today. No wives are going to be made to disappear. <laughs> that's, that's probably the number one trick request. request. <laughs> Can you make my wife disappear? But, Take uh, my wife, please. <laughs> no. <laughs> But, uh, Have you ever cut anybody in half? Actually, one of the keep us away from the microphone. Uh, one of the most fun things we got to do was uh, I wasn't the lead magician in this, but we got to do a magic show. Actually, a Nate Eater was part of it um, for the Philly Fanatic. Where for the Philly, Philly Fanatic, it was a Philly Fanatic's birthday. Okay, so he helped us out. So uh, the Philly Fanatic actually put the blades through the girl. But uh, Nate and my, my best friend Eric and myself, we uh, we got to take the little girl apart and put her back together and all that stuff right there on on the field at Citizens Bank. It was that was probably one of the highlights, nice. one of the things that I've gotten to do. Um, yeah, so I, I have, I have. It's a classic trick that sure. I still don't, I don't know how it works. I have my, I have my guesses, but you know. So in addition to like, have you ever gotten into like? So there, like, there's all these like escape artist tricks and like feats of uh, mental and physical stamina type stuff, like David David Blaine type thing, Houdini type stuff. Yeah. Are you into that kind of thing at all, or are you mostly doing the sleight of hand and things of that nature? 
mostly sleight of hand stuff like that yeah st- like yeah i don't do too many too many escapes or anything like that but um maybe one or two mm-hmm. like i've kind of always wanted to learn a straight jacket escape yeah right that would be a lot of fun um but just have not underwater of course of, of course <laughs> you know, right just <laughs> do it right if you're gonna do it go all yeah, in yeah, first time <laughs> first try you have to Nice. Look nice at that puppy dog. Look, he's looking there you go, Nate. You. Just for you, buddy. There you go, Nate, Nate saying that he loved that day. I have a request, and if you could fulfill it for me, oh, I'd be happy. My girlfriend wants a sword. A sword? Yeah, she's into weapons. Okay, fantastic. What color sword should we make your girlfriend? She would probably like her favorite. Two, two <laughs> favorite colors are green and red. Green and red. So let's go with a red sword. Let's I go. feel like a green sword's... Plus, we have the green dog. You know? Right. Let's we, go with a red sword. The dog get jealous. Looks like she already stabbed somebody with it. Bloody sword. <laughs> sword <Yeah. there. laughs> and you know who she's thinking about stabbing with. Yeah. Me. I could only guess. Yeah. I, could only guess. <laughs> I don't know why, but I can only guess. Because I'm a pain in the neck, I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> my wife has to deal with this all the time. <laughs> Now, are you, you are you married? I am married. Yes. Yeah. Do you have kids? I yep. And that was the thing. I, a part of it. I uh, did a nice pirate sword for you. Do your kids say, "Oh, Dad, balloons again"? Well, she's only uh, <laughs> a year and eight months, okay. so she oh, she can, still loves it. She'll love it for a little while. Yeah. yeah. But it was um, there was another thing. You know, we we thought, hey, I'm, I'm working. I'm doing the magic full time. I'm I'm in a good place making the money blah 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 let's it's time to have a kid and then then the world shut down yeah but uh but she's a uh, she's fantastic as i said she's a year and eight months now and um she's just kind of at the point where i can trick her sure yeah so it's fun i'm gonna see if you can trick us today so yeah. you have like a built-in audience now like Pretty- you have a built-in test factor yeah yes. right <laughs> I, I, and believe me i'm gonna use her as much as i can because um, it's only gonna make me better. Yeah. Right, right. Know yeah. what makes you laugh? Should be like, you think, okay, not that true. That one's not going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, would you like to see something? Yeah, yeah. Show, show, oh, show some magic. I'll show you. We saw some balloons. Let's see some magic. Let me. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna stand up. Okay? Sure thing. Okay. Do what you got to do. Here we go. Matt now, is the on camera. He is. He's got plenty of room. Excellent. And he brought his lunch, obviously. <laughs> so I figure um, I might as well start where I started and show you my first trick that okay. I had act- actually saw. This is your actual first trick. This is the first trick that I, I learned when I was, well, not learned, but it was the first trick I saw when I was little. Okay. Um, it wasn't shown to me by a magician, actually. It was actually shown to me by my dad. So let me... I mean, this isn't the old coin behind the ear trick, is it? It's not. It's, okay. it's a little different. It was that's the was, dad tricks of all dad tricks, right there. Yeah, really. It's 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 an old standard. Um, so when I was younger, like I want to get out of my my chores to do something, and I'd say, Dad, can I, can you? Uh, or my dad said, if you can figure out how to do this trick, you don't have to go out and do your chores. It was like say it was like uh, summer summer break. I get home for summer break and. I'd either have to go out and help with like yard work or right, something or right. do the pool. And I, I wouldn't want to do that. I was a right. young kid. So here's here's the trick that he showed me. If I could figure it out. It uses a bottle and the magical bag of mystery. You know why it's uh, how you know it's the magical bag of mystery? No. I have no idea. Uh, it says so right on the other side. <laughs> it's it's a giveaway. It's yeah. a giveaway. So what do you would do? You take this bottle, all right? You take the bottle and you take the bag and he'd wave his hand over the bag and that bottle would disappear and i was just a young kid and i, I was like I, I don't know how you're doing that but then he waved his hand again and the bottle would come back it's amazing see yeah. i can tell you're amazed too imagine being like a little 10 year old kid trying to how is he doing that? how's he doing so Again, I was to do it again because I didn't see it quite right the first time. <laughs> That's okay. Well, there's there's plenty of seasons to go. <laughs> so it's summertime, so I, I wouldn't I couldn't figure it out because right. that bottle came, it disappeared and it came back. Yeah. But then I just go out there and I start sweeping the pool. But then summer goes to fall, right? Mm-hmm. So fall comes and it's leaves, 
And who wants to rake leaves? Because no, you know, when you're a little, especially. No. Right? I still don't like to. I'm a fully grown man. I don't like to rake leaves. That's what, exactly. the, that's what the leaf that's blower's what the leaf blower's for. for. Absolutely. Totally. Totally. But so I'd say, Dad, can I can I try to figure out that trick again? He said the trick with the magical bag of mystery in the, the bottle. And I said, that's the one. And then so I tried to figure it out from him. And what do you do? He wave his hand. And that bottle would disappear. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's gone. It's magic. But I was I was a little bit older, about a month or two older now in a different season. And he did something different so i knew <laughs> i knew that 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 bottle it was gone it, it was gone there's no way it was there's in there no way. so when he waved his hand again it was back <laughs> how how i don't i don't understand i mean so how do we go to rake the leaves i don't know i don't know so winter came you get home for winter break yeah and there's a big snow so you know back in the 90s we were getting blizzards every year right yeah and sure I didn't want to. I didn't want to go out and shovel all that snow or dig the cars out or anything like that. So I said, "Hey, Dad, can I try to figure out that trick one more time?" And he'd say, "Sure, the one with the magical bag of mystery and the bottle." And I said, "That's the one, Dad." So he put the bottle in the bag, waved his hand. <laughs> Again, he turned it upside down, and I it's still I'm like that bottle's gone. I I don't think it's in there, but there's something going on. But to this day, I'm now 37 years old. All right. And to this day, I still go over it, and I still have to rake the leaves, right. mow the lawn. <laughs> I had no idea where that bottle went. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very good. Very good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So the kids love that. They love it. Everybody and there's a dad. It. It. There's a dad in the audience that's just cracking up like me. It's like it's, I'm a dad. That's a great dad joke. It's all silly. Yeah. It's all silly. <laughs> and it's it's just fun. Because, right. You know, you get reactions like this where people are just having fun. And I think we all just had fun. Sure. Yeah. That's what it's about. Right, right. And I'm, I'm so lucky to be in the position I am to make this my business and make this my career. Right. So nice. So let's tie it around again to another uh, local connection, too, because we've had uh debbie i think her name debbie, debbie, debbie from birthday buddies correct so you're yes. teamed up with birthday buddies now you want to talk a little bit about that, that yeah. connection that you were able to make there yeah it was uh it was kind of the start of the world opening back up i saw uh debbie actually well, i didn't even know debbie at the time but on facebook i saw uh, birthday buddies posting looking for uh face painters and i said i i commented on the post i'm like I'm not a face painter, but any interest in uh, balloons or magic? And she got a hold of me pretty quickly and said, yeah, I'm actually getting phone calls for this pretty regularly, but we don't have anybody to uh, to recommend. So we started talking a little bit more, and that's kind of how the relationship started. So now, um, now she gets calls, and then she kind of just points them in my direction or me in their direction. Mm -hmm. Do you do events together and stuff then? Um, we're working on it. We okay. were supposed to uh, do something this last Friday. I think it's that, a good fit, right, Matt? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do birthdays, and they do birthdays. Um, I know we do have an event coming up in, I think it's in June that we're doing. I think that one's more of a private birthday party. Um, but I know they're having a big grand opening sometime sooner than later uh, program, and I'm going to be there. Like for birthday buddies, like a yeah for birthday buddies, okay. yeah like. Just kind of announce that they're out there too, and yeah. I mean, I, it seems like they're doing really well without that. But just to, um, I guess, just let everybody know that they're they're around and kicking and doing what they're doing. Right, right. They got they got quite a lot to offer. Because I think they're in the same situation. I, if I remember correctly, I mean, she, she yeah, did it back she, in the day, but when she then she moved up here, moved she to was where we started, yep. and it was right around and the, the pandemic time hit. Yeah, yeah no, that that yeah. was absolutely the story that I remember. Yeah. Hearing. Cool. Um, I just put a link to Birthday Buddies up in the chat so people can uh, go from the chat over to the Birthday Buddies Facebook page. All of this stuff that we've talked about has been exceedingly easy to find. Um, I'm yeah. just literally going into the Google search bar or the Facebook search bar and typing these names in. And guess what? 
the links are coming Damn. right up. Everything that I found, I put into the chat. So during the show, if you're uh, technically inclined or after the show, if you're not, you can click on any one of those links and go over to the things that we were talking about, yeah, and there's including a link to the documentary that he oh, talked nice. about. I found that on YouTube just nice. by searching the title. Okay. And anybody watching <laughs> that, that, that wants to hire Ryan, Magically Amazing Ryan, of course, you know, um, you put the link up for the magically amazing Ryan.com, but you can remember that. I think you don't, I think need, so. You don't it's even easy. need a link for it's that. It's easy to remember. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, I hear your website where that it says that you juggle. I do some juggling. Yeah. You juggle knives. I juggle some and knives fire. and some fire. Yeah. So you, cause you just said it nonchalantly like, yeah, I do a little bit of juggling, but you're juggling knives and fire. So I kind of hope that you're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do all right. I do all right. Um, I haven't no cuts, no burns. Um, yeah, it was another thing. I just kind of when I was younger um, at my grandparents' house, I found three balls and just started teaching myself how to juggle. And then from there, you learn how to juggle clubs, and then you find some very finely balanced torches and knives that your gonna... grandparents had finely balanced torches. No, 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 and nothing. No, no, they had the balls that I learned. Oh, to. the balls. Okay. So it, it, yeah. They had the, the balls that I, I learned to teach myself how to juggle. But then I found, and then I uh, went on to buy some clubs to learn to juggle uh, objects like that. And then that pretty much translated over to if you can juggle them and you're not terrified to juggle knives and fire, you just kind of jump into it and do it. Well, not kids. Don't, don't do that. At home. <laughs> uh, I'm but, 48 years old and I've tried to many many times in my life to juggle i still to this day i still can't i'm juggle. not very good at it either i i, I can kind of do it but i i just haven't ever I, developed the patience to do it I can't it do, takes like, practice like, it just takes yeah. a lot of practice yeah now i used to practice for hours practicing juggling a soccer ball when i was a kid a can teenager you that, then? yeah not as well as i could when i was a teenager but i could get to the point where i could like balance it on my head and Flip mm. it around from my foot, up, you know, up, do all kinds of tricks. With Sound this. like a seal. <laughs> well, the idea was, like, like he's saying, to build up enough muscle memory where you can control it. Right. And you're not fearful that something's going to go the wrong way. But it, it does take hours and hours and hours of practice, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's something like, if I remember this correctly, because I used to be an instructor for physical things yeah right right i was i was a firearms instructor yeah but during during my law enforcement career uh -huh. 3500 repetitions it takes in order to build up muscle memory oh, okay. so it, before you can even go to the knives you have to have at least 3500 repetitions with the balls yeah to do it confidently do you think you had 35 thousand repetitions 3500 3500 I, I would probably say i did yeah. Yeah. yeah i would hope so yeah because it's like just regular juggling, just like a standard three ball cascade is enough to learn. But then once you got to, once you try to like, okay, well now I'm going to throw this one over the top or these two over the top or do them all over the top. Like learning that it's just, your brain just has to adapt to it. And then your, the knives, you got to make sure you're getting the handle each time. Yeah. Yeah. That's so where, it's that's putting where another the, thing into it. Do you ever try a chainsaw? I've seen guys like juggling chainsaws. You ever give that a shot? I have not tried that. I, I know uh, a guy who does. And um, he, how many arms does he have? He's got them all still. Okay. <laughs> he's uh, got all three. But, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's it's, why he's so good at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's silly. I mean, yeah, they, they fire up those chain or gas powered chainsaws and uh, and they're some. Of, I mean, I can't say that all three are sharp, but at least one of them is sharp enough to yeah do some damage Dude. to you and I, I, uh, see now you have something to aspire to there's always got to be an aspiration right to move forward in your career you always have to be striving forward i mean i was just gonna try for a fourth sort of fourth knife but, <laughs> but now now i guess now you i throw a chainsaw <laughs> out <Yeah>. on the <laughs> table <laughs> well I, i'm sure my wife wouldn't mind <laughs> yeah, <I'm sorry. laughs> Just, just make sure the insurance is paid up. Yes, that's always important. That's always important. Start with the kitty ones that are, like have the bubble that blow out the bubbles. <laughs> that that, that be would a be a good joke. Yeah. Bubble chainsaw. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Yeah. No 
problem. Hey, we're 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 really creative thinkers here at Clocker like Realty Insurance. I love it. Uh, one of the things I do want to tell everybody is that uh, all of our shows, uh, the older shows, are up on YouTube at Clocker Really Insurance. And if you want to talk or look at some of the other people that we've talked to, like Debbie from Birthday Buddies, um, it's much better to go over to our YouTube channel and go see to the you there. can see them all there they're organized uh chronologically and you can look up some of these other people that we talked about and we're near near our 50th episode are we really yeah okay. we're like somewhere around 47 or 48 right now yeah and then while you're there it can't hurt to subscribe to the channel because then you'll get updates that we're on and you can see all this great stuff that's going down in Boyertown in the surrounding area. And it costs you nothing. It still. costs you free. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and not to mention the fact that at the end of the day, we do sell real estate here. That's like our main job. And uh, there's a lot, a lot of good uh, highlight videos that we're doing for people that are selling their houses in the area. I think we are doing an above average job Absolutely in our market. Absolutely above average. So if you want to see what Glocker Realty can do for you in selling your house or property, go over to the YouTube channel and you'll get a glimpse. Cool. How are we doing for time, Matt? You probably want to let people know what's going down in Boyertown. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's just double check with, with Ryan. Do you have anything else you wanted to present to the public this evening before we move on with the show? Not really so much. I mentioned this weekend at uh, Victory Park. If anybody wants to catch me out there, that's a free event. Uh, lots of things going on. Uh, but beyond that, no, just check out the website. Contact me on Facebook, whatever. Uh, I'm here for all your magic and balloon needs. Excellent. And and your motto, I like your motto, it's everyone deserves a magical moment. I like that. Well, it's definitely. It's good. And I, I take it very seriously. I really yeah. do. Because, like, you know, who knows if that's the first magic that a kid's going to see. Or sometimes I'll do like retirement homes, and I don't want to sound morbid, but what if that's the last magic show? <laughs> show? You know, so I always want to make sure I'm delivering those moments yeah. to people. Yeah, it's it's important. You put a smile, and just you never know what's going to change somebody's day. Absolutely, that's neat, man. Very good. But thank you. He's committed to his art. So we're going to move on to what's going down in Boyertown, but. Um, I want you you're staying here you chime in as you please we're going to discuss a couple of different things and and uh just shout it out if you got something to say okay? definitely yes um so i matt you know i do a blog every week yeah it's a it's basically an event guide but i also i also highlight a top some sort of topic whether it's a, an event or um or it's like something of interest right um, this week i realized that this is the week this coming week is the is the week the official I'm going to call it the official week in our area to start planting your plants outside. Okay. Uh, you could have done it earlier, but they say the frost date for here. Um, you're it's pretty the much first safe. weekend after Mother's Day. You're free. They say you're pretty much safe. Um, May 11th is the okay. date that they gave. Okay. And uh, my grandfather, who is the the best gardener that I ever knew, right? Which had amazing gardens and stuff like that, was in garden magazines. He went by his birthday, which is May eighteenth. Okay, he said so there's never been a frost past his, that. Yeah, so that's this week. So we'll see if that week. holds true with climate change. Yep, if you believe in that kind of thing, <laughs> right? But I guess you know this, this time of year would be warmer. I guess. Yeah, sure. Than normal. Yeah. Um, so I looked at the weather coming mm -hmm. up. And we are clear. Okay. So I think we're everybody's good to plan outside. Uh, so what I um, discussed this in this week's blog was um, kind of tricks, hacks, if you want to call them hacks, tricks to gardening, magic yeah. tricks. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even realize how that tied in there. But um, here's a couple. I'm going to video a couple that I found, but there's a, a whole bunch going to be on the blog what's going down in border town find, find that at jeff's bordertown.com um okay prevent preventing dirt under your nails now this sounds like a silly thing but you know and you think okay you know females would like this more than guys but sometimes you have an appointment right yeah and you don't want to go to your appointment with dirt all under your nails so i do like okay so i'm not so much of a gardener uh -huh. uh, well 
I have been in the past, right. like, but this year we decided not to do the garden because we have some traveling we want to do instead. Okay. But fishing, dude, mm -hmm. I go fishing during the day, sometimes in between appointments, if I'm lucky enough to get to be able to do that. But my, I always get some dirt on my hands or under my nails. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work for fishing. Maybe okay. it will, maybe it won't. I don't know. All right. But they say that take your nails and scrape it across a bar of soap. And that what that does is feel, fills in that your nail I got part you. with, like, with, the with soap. soap. Yeah. And then scrub it out. And it's going to scrub out real easy. I have a nail brush. Do you know what a nail yeah, brush yeah, is? Yeah, that's what they actually say to use. Yeah. Afterwards. I yeah. use the nail brush, and the nail brush works great for me. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Um uh another thing is to reuse water now you're gonna say well everybody knows that but i never thought of it the way that they're presenting it um they said you know when you steam vegetables or yeah you, or you make Oil some pasta yeah yeah or something, yeah yeah take that water afterwards of course not when it's so hot right when it cools down and put that in your garden especially the vegetables it, it has all kinds of nutrients in it okay like that. okay the garden loves it uh-huh and Brandy you're not dumping waste, that stuff yeah. down the drain yeah exactly interesting um so try, people have rabbit problems i know many gardeners somehow i don't have rabbit problems but i know many gardeners. that's surprising to pet where you live because we had rabbit problems and my garden is in the middle of Pottstown. Yeah, and crazy. we had rabbit problems yeah and possum problems and raccoon problems I put the little fence up around my garden and, and that keeps them out. I, it's like this high, I, I guess. I don't hmm. know. They're just, maybe they're afraid of it, you know, getting yeah. tangled in or something. Right. Right. I don't know. But, um, but what they say that he really keeps the rabbits away is blood meal. So you yeah. Sprinkle I've heard some this blood meal yeah. in the garden, but you don't want to get too close to the plant because it can burn the plant because it is, it, but it, it it's also, acidic probably it's very something. acidic. Yeah. And it also, um, it's a good fertilizer though. Okay. So you can just put it in the garden and let it, it be. It keeps the animals away. Yeah, it keeps them out. Um, I have heard that trick before. This is one that I've used, that I do use, and it really, really works. Um, I, an old gardener told me this trick, and, and it works perfect. Uh, keeping birds out of your strawberry patch. Okay. They say paint rocks red like bright red yeah and put them in there so they look like fresh strawberries the birds come down they peck at it they hurt their beak that really hurts them a lot uh -huh. and they they like I, i'm not going to do this again huh. because it hurts them so much. you're training them yeah interesting it, but it trains them like that huh and it works i did it three years ago i started doing it yeah i've never had a problem how big a rock just a strawberry, I, I strawberry size, size yeah huh mm -hmm. yeah when sh when do you plant your strawberries in order to get them to come up at the right time? So this my, time of year? So around now? I don't remember when I originally planted them, but they just regrow. Oh, really? Year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they spread out. You know, they spread out. Yeah, and, yeah. And then they so they're regrow. perennials. I guess so. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. And they always come up up good. But man, I really had a problem with the birds in one year, and yeah, man, someone told me that trick. And, I had sure these, um, I bought these strawberries one time at Home Depot that they had growing in these hanging baskets, some kind of hybrid. Okay. And we grew them, but like you're saying, the birds beat them to us before yeah. we could really get them. Every time yeah. we'd start seeing a couple and as soon as they got right, Even the then, birds just would put get it, them. Like in the basket there. Yeah. I just, I didn't know that trick, but yeah. now I do. If I ever try to grow strawberries again, it's a good, good Absolutely. trick. Absolutely. That's my favorite. Um, because I, I actually know it works yeah for sure and it's good for the environment you're not really you're not damaging anybody no. you're just sending the no, birds it's not the birds idiot yeah, sending it's, a message yeah, right <laughs> <laughs> but um and and another one i'll throw out there um just because i know a lot of people a lot of gardeners have beer problems mm -hmm. and they say um if you hang soap around the garden they hate that <laughs> smell of soap and it keeps them away. Okay. And and I, I looked it up and yeah, there, people swear by it. Hmm. So hmm. something to try. Yeah. Well, later on in the growing season, I have a solution for deer problems. <laughs> and the end result is quite tasty. That, that's the fall. <laughs> that's the fall uh, garden season. Yeah. I can clear that up for you. <laughs> you have your meat and potatoes. Yeah, there you go. It's all came from the garden. <laughs>
but it's true. It's true. Absolutely. All right. So, like I said, it's an event guide. Uh, what's going down in Border Town found at jeffknowsbordertown.com. So here are some of the events that are happening in and around the area. I have a whole bunch listed. I, I say each, each week we're looking at 50 to 100 events. Yeah. So And the list is growing and growing. It is. Yeah. It is because now everything's getting back to normal. And the weather's turning Huge. nice, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. So talking about the weather getting nice, uh, Kim and Paul. Kim mm -hmm. was in here. Mm -hmm. um, she's from Boot. They are from Boudra Day. Um, and they do an acoustic duo mm -hmm. as well. Uh, they're going to be at the other farm brewing company. Hopefully the weather holds out because the, I think that's the last two weekends I've been like rain outside. Maybe. Yeah. It's been a lot of rain yeah. this season. So a lot the of, creeks lot are of up. cancellations and stuff, but outside at the other farm brewing company, hopefully this Friday from five to eight, Kim and Paul will be playing and they're great. I've never heard of them before. They're, they're awesome. Um, you like cigars? I have been known to indulge from like time cigars? to time. Nah, not so much. Okay. I used to like cigars. I don't anymore but um there's a uh, colbrookdale railroad on friday night is having a cigar express okay uh forged cigar company will be there i guess we'll be handing out some cigars mm -hmm. and you'll be in an open open uh air cart mm -hmm. or train mm -hmm. and uh we will smoke cigars have a couple drinks enjoy yourself during the beautiful train ride right on so awesome. people that hear this that are worried that the train's going to smell like smoke the next day. It's not because it's in the open Yeah, they're car. outside. Yeah. I went on a cigar fundraising ride a couple of years ago. It was scotch and cigars. Mm -hmm. And everybody was smoking the cigars out on the outside train. Nice. Nobody was smoking. Yeah, yeah I don't no. think that. No. Um, let me see. Uh, the State Theater is playing Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness you, do you do any of the superhero movies yes yeah, so i'm yawning before. i'm sorry um sorry. the marvel series yeah i started so watching Strange, you dig. yeah i from when i was a kid i kind of knew the story a little bit because i did read superman and um some of the fantastic four stuff mm -hmm. and that's all kind of dr strange is eventually wrapped up into those yeah in that series they're all wrapped in there yeah they are all connected yeah. but um we started watching the Marvel series on uh, Disney Plus because I have Verizon phone service. And if you have a Verizon Unlimited cell plan, you get free Disney Plus. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, we have been at my house working our way through several of the Marvel nice. uh, franchises. Yes. Takes a lot of time. It does. <laughs> and some of those movies are like two and a half hours oh, each. Yeah yeah that was our first thing that our family did during the shutdown is we we watched the marvel series mm -hmm. from from beginning to end okay in chronological in, order in chronological yes, yes. so yeah. we had talked about doing that and we kind of did it in like fits and starts uh -huh. and then we worked in some star wars and there was some other stuff that uh, we were binge watching a little bit too but we still are working on the Marvel series. Yeah. Now I talked to the woman. What's the name? We talked to her. Yeah, I can't think, uh, of, her I can't right think of her name. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah, I'm sorry. She was at coming out of hibernation, and uh, I talked to her. She, they are really thinking that that is going to be a super popular movie. So if you're interested in seeing that at the state, you should probably pre-order your tickets. Yeah. She was saying that. That was heavily, heavily um, requested, and that they were getting a lot of feedback from people from the community saying that they were definitely going to go to the state yeah. to watch it there. Yeah, so we should we, probably we were get planning on up. going on Mother's Day. Uh, we didn't, but we will be going soon because I mean, the Doctor Strange, the other doc, the first Doctor Strange movie was awesome. Yeah, I did watch really that. Cool. That was one of the ones that we watched. Yeah, so that's playing all week long. Go see it at State Theater. And they have new seats. Yes. Yeah. They're not all new. They're doing them like one row at a time. Right. And I don't know what the projected end date for that I is, but either. it's they are slowly but surely replacing all the seats. Try out those new, new seats. Um, hey, what's back at the Culverdale Railroad is rail bikes. Yes. Which was hugely popular. It has, was so popular, popular that they had to order more rail bikes. Yeah. They didn't realize how popular this was going to be. And they didn't have enough rail bikes. So they ordered, like, I don't know how many more in order to keep up with demand. 
But that is another thing that if you want to get the rail bikes, you should probably start booking that now. Yeah, you should get your tickets in advance yeah. for sure. Because mm -hmm. the day of, most likely, it's, it's going to be out. sold out. Yeah. So uh, they're doing Saturday and Sunday rail bikes um, multiple times on Saturday and multiple times on Sunday. Just I think the Colebrookdale Railroad might be benefiting from a magic show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you should probably reach out to them, bro. I think we probably should. Yeah, <laughs> the magic train. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> Spotted Hill Farms in Pottstown, um, connected to um, uh, what's it called Old House. Oh, Old... Halt. Dude, I, Boy, can, you say, you... can you say it? I can. Okay. Arboretum. That's it. Alt House Arboretum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's where they do the goat yoga, right? Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. So Spotted Hill Farm, what's going on? So there? check it out. They're doing goat yoga, <laughs> yoga with baby goats. Yes. Which is even cuter. I mean, oh. it's not regular. It's baby yeah. goats. You ever see a baby goat? They're this oh, yeah. big and they run around and they're cute and they. I don't know. I don't know if I want a goat crawling around. On me. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. I would love to have the goat. Yoga. I don't no, it's super popular. Part. I've that's seen. A... I've seen the pictures on Facebook. It's super popular. People show up for this. Absolutely. Yeah. They show up, so they're doing. Uh, they're doing baby goda, baby goda, <laughs> baby goda, yoga <laughs> with baby goats on Saturday from five to six and Sunday three to five. So they're go they're doing goga with go baby yoda, <laughs> baby yoda. <laughs> <laughs> so Spotted Hill Farm is the place to go if you are interested in such things. Um, and then last. No, this is not last. I'm lying. <laughs> Second to last. Right, right. Not least. Uh, Healthy Kids Running Series. Yes, I'm sponsoring. Oh, sponsor? You're sponsoring. I am. Yeah, awesome. Me personally. Good job, Matt. So that means the summer series is open for sponsorship. It, it is. If somebody else yeah, wants oh, to yeah. do that. I spawn, I they do spr spring? Spring and fall, fall. I think. Fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fall series. Um. So right now, Spring Series is happening. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. You didn't have to register ahead of time. Like you can just go at each event, which happens yes. every Sunday from three to five thirty. I'm going to search them up on Facebook and put a link up for them. Yeah, you should. I mean, and they we had uh, Jeff on. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to talk to him about the Healthy Kid Running Series and what a cool, fun activity and event that is for kids. They are, and they. If you are in another industry that would like to sponsor them, they take their sponsorships pretty serious. Like they shout out my name on their Facebook page. Mm -hmm. They now come to our events and support our events. Nice. Like I've seen that they come up to the table at uh, coming out of hibernation. Uh -huh. They were at the Easter egg hunt. So it's. I feel like it's a good sponsorship because they're partnering yeah it's exactly. a partnership right right they're not, not just like taking your money and that's correct it. you never yeah. hear from them again they are they're around they come around they stop nice. by the office over the winter time to check up to see how we were doing if we wanted to sponsor them again so and i would people, say and they're really good people and they're really into it super so, nice yeah. super nice folks yeah Jeff now Schantz. last but not least um there is a benefit benefit for the boyer town library happening this Sunday from at 5 p.m. at the Union Jack's Old Congo Hotel. Yes, in, in Hoffmansville, yeah, in, greater downtown Hoffmansville. On Hoffmansville Road. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's called Books and Brews. So you go there, you have some beers, and they're going to have a whole bunch of books set up that are gently used books uh -huh. um, that you can purchase, That and all the, all the money will benefit. I think part of part of the money for the beer, and I think all the money for the books, okay, will benefit the um, Boardtown Library, and they're I guess they're doing renovations over there. Okay, my understanding. Yeah. So going towards the renovation. So look, you you might get a good book. Mm -hmm. You have some good beers. Yeah. And you're going to be benefiting our library. Right. So we've tried to get somebody from the library to come yeah. on the show. They're a little uh, scared. Apprehensive. Scared. Yeah. I'm yeah. just going to say for what it is. Word. They're yeah. a little scared. Yeah. yeah. But if we could and get, and luckily for that person, we they, we got snowed out. We were going to going to have a show with them, uh huh. And then we got snowed out, and they, I'm sure, and that she got was her off the hook. Her lucky stars that, that it got canceled because she. I've never seen anybody so nervous in my life. We're not that scary though, Ryan. Are, are we no, scary, Ryan? Not at all. This is 
Kate. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. We got to get somebody from the library on. Absolutely. I would love to talk yeah, to the library. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of people connected to that library. Right. So I'm sure well, we someone, can find someone yeah. to talk about. The someone library. to represent. Correct. Yeah. So that's what I got. That's what's going down in Boyertown. There's a whole lot more on the site. So check it out. Jeff knows Boyertown.com. And it's what's going down in Boyertown is the event guide. There you go. I'm going to start breaking it down because we are coming yeah, down do to it. the bottom of the hour. Our guest today has been the magically amazing Ryan. I'm going to put his caption back up on the, on the screen, and hopefully I stop stuttering. The magically amazing Ryan. You can find him at the magically amazing Ryan.com. I put links to his page in the chat. I put links to his uh, website in the chat. So please, after the show ends, stay on that chat function and do some clicking around. You'll be able to learn more about Ryan and what he does and book him for your party. Absolutely. Yeah. Throw the man some work. He's a local guy. Remember, the reason we started the cast at Glocker was to support local businesses. Now more than ever, we're coming out of the pandemic. And if the one thing that the pandemic should have taught you is that it is better to spend your money locally yes. than to give it away to somebody who does not care about your community. I think I, they, I think everybody learned that. Hopefully everybody remembers stick that. Stick to it. Yeah. Stick to it. Right. Um, here is a tip that I found because it is Shop Local Week. Is it? To the 14th. Okay. Shop Local Week. If you shop locally or support a local business, 48 out of every $100 that you spend locally stays in the community. That's awesome. Almost half of the money. Yeah. If you shop local right. or support a local business, 48 out of every $100 that you spend stays in the community. Yeah. If you go to a big box store, only 14 of those dollars mm. stay in your community. Right. If so, you're lucky, I'm sure. Support local. Yeah. That's absolutely. what this show always, is all about. Always. Hey, real one, I have one more question for Ryan real quick. Do you do adult parties? I do. Okay. I do, actually. Well, that's important to know then. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, the Magically Amazing Ryan is more geared towards the children. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, wait, you got a different name? I do go by a different name, which is the adequate, awesome, Ryan. The adequate Adam Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's nobody, the same name. <laughs> well, nobody can pronounce Adamovich. Right. So I struggled I with it. And you out. even told it to me a couple That's of times. Okay. And I still struggled with it. That's okay. So and but for my whole life, people have called me Adam because of my last name. They say because they think it's just Adam and then Ovich is my last name. Uh -huh. So I just kind of took that and made it Adam. And then I said, like I said, can't pronounce Adamovich, so just make it Adams. So the adequate <laughs> Adam Adams. But it's all um, AAA. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But it's all you know. Don't you search to... AAA though, because you're probably not going to get you right. Not to there, no, yeah. no. But um, no, really. If if they contact through the magically amazing Ryan, we can still make it work. It's all family friendly stuff. Um, the adult shows aren't anything risque or anything like that. But they just definitely have some tricks that are as bright and colorful. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. All right. Good. That's that was good to know. I'm glad I asked that question last minute. <laughs> There you go. All right. The cast at Glocker, uh, we're on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock. We're on Facebook, the Glocker Realty and Insurance Facebook page. We're also on YouTube, Glocker Realty and Insurance. That's how you can find us. Uh, my name is Matt Green. I'm one of the hosts here. I also have a show that I do in Pottstown called Porchcast Pottstown. We're going to be on the air tomorrow. At six o'clock. What you got going on? We're going to be talking to a woman by the name of Amy Canop, who has a business called uh, Amy's Upcycling. And she takes old furniture and stuff and fixes it up and makes it like new. Nice. Um, our last uh, several shows have been more on the heavy side as far as like the topics that we've been covering. Uh -huh. So it's, it's going to be lighter. a little lighter yeah. fare for folks rather than talking about crime in Pottstown and some of the other things that we've gotten into. Yeah. But um, we try to cover all the bases. Sure. And uh, so this week we're keeping a little bit light. We got Amy Knopp coming in. And I, like I said, we're on uh, Facebook. We're on Matt Green at Glocker Real Estate. And YouTube, we're on Porchcast Pottstown Thursday nights at 6. Nice.
Good. All right, I'm Jeff Frederick. I'm a real estate agent with Glocker Realty, and uh, you can find me at, where can you find me at? Jeff at Glocker. Jeff at Glocker, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. No problem. My brain stopped working for a second, and you picked up on it. I like mm -hmm. that. I like that. Mm -hmm. See you we got a couple of shows coming down. Jeff, you're going to be on vacation or tied up with some family obligations. Uh -huh. yeah. So we're going to be bringing Robin Lawhorn in as a oh. special co-host. No, yes. No, cool. She wants to take us down to her neighborhood, which is North Coventry her area. Hood? Her hood. She's yeah. going to take us down to the 19465. Oh. And she's got a couple of shows lined up. So the other side of the bridge. Yeah, the other side of the river. <laughs> So uh, keep your eyes on that. That's going to nice. be myself, Matt Green, running the controls for Robin Lawhorn. Cool. And when's that happening? Uh, you know. Coming up. The next couple of weeks, we're going to do the remainder of Wednesdays and Wednesday. Okay. Of the remainder of Wednesdays in May. Okay. And the first Wednesday in June. Nice. Tune in for that. All right, we are the cast at Glocker. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Remember, support your local musician or magician, magician <laughs> and musician and realtor. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. See you.